To work with the object browser is the class view. The class view provides wizards that allow you to compose objects that later you can view in the object browser. Let's experiment with this next. In order to use the class view, let's go ahead and create a class. Right click on your project in your Solution Explorer and select Add, New Item. You can see the variety of different items that you have available to add. One of these is a class option. By default, the class will have the extension based on the language you're working with. In this case, it's Visual Basic. A faster way to access a class is to cancel out, right click, and just simply say Add Class. This will directly focus on the class type instead of you having to scroll down to it. Let's keep the name Class 1 and select Add. Typically, you'd want to use the class name based on the type of object that you're creating. For example, a Windows form is called a form class. We could start typing code to add methods, properties, and events to our class, or as a faster tool, we can use the class view. In order to use this tool, select View, Class View. On the right-hand side of your screen, the class view will pop up. By default, it will highlight the project name. If I open up the project name, I can see the references and any namespaces that I have available. This operates very similar in fashion to the object browser. If I right-click on the class, I can go ahead and select View Class Diagram. By doing so, I'll have an easy-to-use visual tool for adding elements to my class, such as properties, methods, and events. Select View Class Diagram. In the middle of my screen, I will see my class diagram, which has the suffix CD. This is the visual representation of my class. Anything I do here to manipulate my class will be translated directly into the code. And likewise, if I write something in the code and take a look at it in the diagram, all my changes in the code will be reflected in my class in a visual sense. On the left-hand side, I can see that my toolbox has changed. It allows me to drag other classes onto my design surface. I can give them names, and in this case, I'll call it Class 2. And if I look in my Solution Explorer, I now have a second class. I can choose to set associations between these two classes, such as Inheritance. I can simply just choose Association to create a property that exposes another class from within a class. I can also work directly with my interface. Let's select the pointer option to restore my cursor back to a pointer, and then select the drop-down arrows to expand my class. If I right-click on my class component, I can see I have a variety of different options. If I'd like to, I can show the base class from which this class derives from, or I can show any derived classes that inherit from my particular class. Another option is to add elements, such as method, properties, fields, and events. In this case, let's go ahead and add a method. By selecting the method option, I can see a pink box signifying that this is a method. And let's say I decide to add a method get data. If I look down below in my class details view, I can see that my method has been added. I can also work directly with the class details view and add parameters. For example, let's say I need an ID parameter in order to get data for a particular identifier. I can type in ID and the class details will provide me with a particular type I wish to use. In this case, it might be an integer. As I start typing, you can see the designer is smart enough to pick up what I'm typing and provide me a list of choices. This is called IntelliSense. In this case, I'll go ahead and choose an integer. I can also modify it by value type, by reference, or in a parameter array. I can also use a summary to provide documentation about my ID. If I take a look at the code that's been generated, first let's hit Save, and let's take a look at the code that was generated, I can see that the summary now becomes a comment inside of my code. I can also see, because I chose not to return a value type, I have a sub instead of a function returned for my get data. My modifier was by value, the name was ID, and as integer. You can see that the class diagram provides a very visual way to program your components without actually typing a line of code. You can also choose to add additional comments to your class method by dragging over the comment bar. 
And by clicking on my secondary class, I can go ahead and build that out and add other properties to it. By selecting the properties option, I can select first name as a particular property. And selecting this, I can see that I can view it down in my properties window in my class details. I can also work directly in my class details window. I can go ahead and select the navigate to events property and go directly to the events and choose an event. Let's call it validated. And this can fire when the data has been validated. If I look in my class view and expand the nodes, I can see that I have different properties available down in my attributes window. Let's select save all. Select object browser. Underneath the drop-down box, you'll see another box for searching. Now that we've created a class, let's see how we can leverage the object browser to peruse that class. In your search box, type in class1, which is the name of the class that we've created. Use the green arrow key, and you can see that you'll navigate directly to the class that you've created. Just like any other object that's available, you can go ahead and expand the node. In this case, we only have one method called getData. We didn't provide a summary, but if we had, we would actually be able to see the summary listed. But we did provide a comment for the parameters. And as we can see, the ID provides a unique identifier for retrieving the data. So now you can see as a best practice how you can create classes and objects, providing them with the appropriate comments so that later when people are using your classes as a learning tool, they can use the object browser to view them. So in summary, you can see how the class designer works with the toolbox, works also with the class view window, as well as the solution explorer to allow you to manipulate a class diagram. And then likewise, when you're working with any other project file, whether it's a Windows Forms, WPF project, Silverlight, or ASP.NET, you'll use the traditional core elements such as the solution explorer, class view, properties, and server explorer to work with your application.